Well, hello everyone. Um, I got this here today. Actually, I got it today when I came to office, saw it on my table. Uh, this is a Rhino Storm Studios TBD Smart Shunt battery monitor, 500 amps. They asked me if I was going to review it, like I'm any good at it. So, I said, sure, why not send it to me? Because judging by the pictures they sent me in the email, it looked like a um, copy of actual Victron Smart Shunt. So, here it is. A quick glance at it, but let's go open it, see what we got. Okay. Here it is. I don't know why it says 500 millivolts right there. 500 amps, 500 millivolts. If you had a 500 millivolt drop across your shunt, you would have big issues over here. It would be heating up a lot. However, when I look at the uh, shunt itself, it does says 500 amps at 50 millivolts. So this up front, I don't know is that... Um, is that the mistake on their side? Or does that might mean that it works down to 500 millivolts or half a volt? That I don't know. Maybe we can test it later. It has a UART connection, just like the uh, Smart Shunt. And unlike Smart Shunt, it does have three connections over here, which says, uh, uh, Voltage battery, voltage battery, and auxiliary. I want to assume they can measure two voltages plus maybe a um, maybe a um, temperature sensor like the smart shunt. So we'll see how that works. So you get two positives with fuses, inline fuses on the, on the wires, and you got one negative. Or whatever this might be oh this is it is guys I think this is a temperature sensor all right so this will probably go into one of these connections over here this is a temperature sensor that's a good thing with Victron smart shot you do not get temperature probe you have to pay for it and according to their website and they say it's available right now this will cost what 65 bucks or so I didn't really pay that much attention anyways let's go through the uh, user manual all right nothing special here ah, okay so same setups as with the uh, Victron Smart Shunt, guys. You can measure voltage midpoint in your battery bank. And you can also monitor battery temperature. I'm just going through this as you would. Okay, and then of course they have some kind of an app too. We'll test that. We'll test that part too once we get to it. Now let's try connecting this right now. All right, I'm going to use a different setup than than just the battery. So let's see how that works out. So here we are. You hook up your uh, battery probe in the first one right here. And, of course, you will hook up your negative over here on a on a, where it says uh, battery minus okay so let's hook up a negative and then we're gonna hook up a positive and then it'll be interesting to see if the light lights up for a Bluetooth yep there it is so I am doing this as any of you guys would, I need to test it. 
So wait a second, let me grab another tab. I grabbed my wife's phone. Let's see if we can scan it and get to the correct app on the Play Store. So we'll scan it directly out of the uh, user's manual here. All right. Okay, it's taking me to the Play Store, TBD Smart Shine. Okay, we'll install it. All right, we'll open it. Well, here, here's my first problem with this. Why do I need to log in? For what? Why are you asking me this? I don't know about that. This might be a fail right here. All right, so for purposes of testing, I'll do it. To detect the Bluetooth, you need to turn on the location permission and denying the permission will affect the use of device. Check this out. Why? For what? Why do I have to go through this? Location permission. All right, for purposes of this video, I'll go through this. All right, it did find it. It's hooking up to it. So, right here we're showing 13 volts. The voltage on. The app is showing 13.1. So, this part does work. This, this reminds me of, this reminds me of a Victron Smartshunt app. Okay, so I just tried using the Victron Smartshunt app and it does not work. Obviously, I didn't really thought that was going to work. However, comparing the app settings, I think they look the same once you go through the menus and whatnot. Uh, yeah, this part, it looks totally the same. Graphics are a little bit different, but that's okay. So, enough comparisons between this and a Victron Smart Shot. This is, I guess, its own product. Now, let's talk about some good things before we go into one more type of a test. For the price, for the price of $60, you get a smart shunt with the battery monitor. It's $59.95, whatever it is on Amazon. Right? That's what I check right now. It's, I think it's $59.95. doesn't matter. Uh, the good thing about it is it is more than half of the price of Victron Smart Shunt plus the uh, uh, temperature sensor for it. Okay? Victron Smart Shunt, as it is, it's about $131.00. And the temperature sensor is about $25. So that's about $155, $156. So that's a big difference. Now, the only unknown is how good this part works. Okay. How good is everything calibrated? They have cuts over here, just like every one of them, trying to calibrate the settings. We'll test that too, not in this video. Now, what we're going to test in this video is... Does this temperature sensor work? Okay, so let's dive into it. Okay. All right, so let's check a couple of things. Let's check the accuracy of voltage reading. Let me open up an app. It takes a while to open up an app. I guess every time the screen goes blank, you got to restart the app. All right, so we are hooking up to it. Okay, on the app, it says 13.1 volts as the voltage measured, right? So, this device, I find out it's very, very accurate. The Klein Tool CL800. So, let's see what it says as the battery voltage. All right, so let's check it out right here on the shunt. I'm not going to show it. We'll just have to go 
throw this together. 13.1, exactly to the dot. I like this. I like this about this device already. The app says 13.1. This darn thing, 13.1 to the dot. Ah, that's a good thing. Uh, let's see now what do we have to do to enable Temperature Pro. Let's see how good that is. All right. We go one menu, others. Okay, same as Victron Smart Shot app. Go ahead, enable the auxiliary input to read the temperature which I did and then it asks you it talks about temperature coefficient if you want to see that it's exactly the same as it is on a Victron Smart Shunt I have a video on that too installing the temperature sensor so it's going to be exactly the same go watch that video okay so right here let's go back and now we switch to the input and it's showing the battery temperature right now okay 24. Point six now I will bring my um, I will bring my uh, infrared sensor let's see what kind of temperature does it read compared to this one all right took me some time to find my meter this is infrared one and right now it shows 24 degrees all right 23.9 let's see what the what this thing shows 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 25.1 okay so it's a one degree Celsius off so that is not bad it's only one degree off maybe there's a difference between this and this temperature sensor but I think this is accurate enough and I like it. I think what we have here for $60 and if amp readings are as accurate as Victron Smart Shunt, I think we have a winner on our hands. Um, am I happy about this being a copy of Victron Smart Shunt? Um, not really. I mean, Victron does deserve, they came with that design and they deserve respect and they can command the price. However, what I believe is that this TBD Smart Shunt is a great competitor and I think it will do good. For $60, you do get the temperature probe with it too and a 500 amp capacity. Um, yeah, the part two of this video will be uh, amp amp accuracy testing what I'm trying to do in that part of the video is I want to get I want to buy something that it's actually really accurate in measuring the amps going through your wires and I would like it to be a whole effect uh, type sensor to see to see how accurate the amp ratings are uh, that is my quest and without that, I will not test the accuracy of amp readings on, on this device. Um, in, in my experience, even readings with, be, between this tool and the other tool that I have and a Victron Smart Shunt and, um, and another whole type of effect sensor, um, the readings are all over the place. So, what I want to do is I want to get something that can actually measure this correctly. So, that will be the part two. Of this video all right guys not not a bad device for $60 and uh, I think for the most of you that have RVs and big batteries and whatnot and it, I think it will do great and even us some of us that have these big batteries especially like I do I think it will great too unless you have a BMS that can do all this for you so far I think this will be a good device and my only beef that I have is the app okay why do I have to give you email and why do you need to know my location it just does not make any sense um, I wish they could fix that other than that app looks just just as the other app uh, 
colors are fancy, prettier. It's, it has a nicer, uh, nicer animations. So I think this device will do good. All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Later.